Hi everyone, I'm Jody Barrows with The Square and a Square. In this video today, I'm going to show you how to take a block that looks really difficult and turn it into a super easy design. And once you know the square and a square system and get those square eyes, you're going to be able to start looking at blocks like this and turning them into the options or the triangle units that we use in the square in a square system. So to make this beautiful block, all you're going to need is your square and a square reference book. And I'll talk to you about the pages in there that we're going to go to here in a few minutes, your square and a square ruler and some scraps of fabric. Now, when you're pulling out your scraps, you can pull out squares, you can pull out strips and I want you to make a stack of your lights. And then I want you to make a stack of your mediums and darks. Now, when you've choose those mediums. I want you to look at them in reference to your lights, because if you don't have a good contrast, then don't use that medium. You always want to make sure in a scrap quilt that you have definite and good contrast when you put those mediums and those lights together, because if that medium is too light and it blends into your lights, then you lose the design and it makes a scrap quilt look unorganized or chaotic and not as beautiful and smooth is what a lot is what a scrap quilt should definitely be so let's look down here at our table and um, let's first of all let's look at our block and dissect it and see what we're going to need when you first look at the quilt what you see is this beautiful elaborate spool type block does it can you see how it looks kind of like a spool with all this extra goodness going on inside and you start looking at it and trying to decide the different shapes and how it should go together and it just looks too difficult with too many triangle units coming together. But when I look at it with my square eyes of the square in a square system, all I see are two different sizes of half square triangles. And we're going to talk about those and the sizes in our reference book here in just a moment. So I'm going to come up here and we're going to draw a line around what you see. And this was a beautiful pattern that I saw um, a quilt that someone had made and it was on one of the quilting Facebook pages and I just really was drawn to it because of the scrappiness and the beauty of the quilt and so that always makes me look at it and start dissecting it into the square and a square system so you could look at it and see oh here's a, a square and a square or here's flying geese or here's a funny little triangle shape in here with that one and it just looks too difficult to make but when I look at it I see this. So if you go like from the center of your spool and come out, I see this. And every block I make is going to be just like this. And then the different ways I turn them and put them together. So you can see how four of them coming together. See, there it is again. There it is again. And so you're just going to sew it together in rows and see how this is kind of a, I'm going to say a light side and this is kind of a dark side. So you'll just pay attention to your lights and your darks and the placement of how you twist this block and sew them together all in your rows. So now that we know that we just need some half square triangles, let's break this down a little bit more. So there's four half square triangles, and I'm going to get all four of those out of one basic square. And then here's a large half square triangle. And then over here again, here are those smaller half square triangles. So you want this to be half the size of this one. And that's really all you need to know to go into your charts and to start making your block. And you can see how this is just four half square triangles put together like we're going to do here and then a large one. And then these are the four half square triangles and this is a large one. This is your block just sewn together in rows. And when the rows come together, you get that beautiful spool without the hassle and the headache and the hard work of putting all of these different triangle units. It's just amazing to me how the square and a square sy system takes every quilt design and every block and turns it into a simple design that most anybody can make. I always say that with the square and a square system, you can become the piecer that you always wanted to be. So let's look at how we're going to make these half square triangles a little bit more about our color and the chart um, in our book. 
So first of all, you're going to have two different sizes of half square triangles. We'll talk about sizes in just a minute. You can start with a dark in the center and put scrappy lights all the way around it. Or you can start with lights in the center and put scrappy darks all the way around it. It's up to you and the stash pile that you have that you're working with. Because when you cut these up, you're going to be getting half square triangle units to move those around and mess with your color placement as much as you want to. We'll trim these in just a moment so you can see how easy it is. This is your Square and Square Reference Book Volume 1. This is the one that goes into detail about all of your options or triangle units that start out with a square in the middle. So the first 17 options are going to be in here and it's going to tell you everything you need to know about that triangle unit. We're going to be using option 4 and it is on page 18 of your reference book. Now we're also going to go to page 34 and here we start in with 12 pages of charts and these charts are easy to do and easy to read and that's what I'm going to go to to figure out my sizes. So the very first column says what is the the size the sewn size of this half square triangle that you're looking for and all you need to do is have two sizes that if this let's say that this is a three inch half square triangle not square but a three inch half square triangle for our large then our small one needs to be a one and a half so go in here to the chart find your one and a half inch and then down here at the bottom find your three inch and move across on both of those lines it's going to tell you what size of square and strips so that these will all match up and go together and that's the only pattern that you need to make this beautiful quilt so when you trim half square triangles you're going to do what we call the two-step. And when you look at your ruler, you're gonna to go to the 90 because your 90 is your square and you're working with square centers. So put the 90 right into the tip or the corner of that fabric square and we call it the two-step because you're stepping over two lines and you're putting the tip of the line where it falls off the edge of the ruler right into the tip or the corner of that center fabric square. The black line should go right over your seam, your grid line right through the point, hand flat, never cut like a spider, no matter what ruler or um, cutting that you're doing. And we're just going to keep turning and trimming on each of the four triangle units. Now, once you start trimming, you wanna make sure that the lines on the ruler and the fabric underneath are nice and neat or parallel. You don't want it to be crooked. See how that would look very crooked. So it's very important to have your tip of the line, tip of the square, and your lines where you've already started cutting square. This helps keep these outside edges all square and nice and even. And see how that's nice and sharp? There's no white being cut off over here, and this is not blunt. And keep going, step it over. Now look on the two sides where you've trimmed and make sure you're staying square on the outside. Now the inside part is your four cuttings, your four sewings, and your pressing. So that's what we call the human element. So it may not be perfect. That's why it's important to keep the outside square because this inside here may not be perfect. And you want these to have a nice good shape on the outside. And your point will stay tip point to point and your line down there will be great. So always make sure that you're trimming the corner appropriately and keep it square on the outside edges, even if these inside don't line up perfect. Because that's where your human element is. And that's the beauty of the square and square system is it helps remove the human element. So the human can do all the work here and then you let the ruler trim it up and make it perfect. So after you have all four corners trimmed, then you're just gonna slide it over and you're gonna cut right through those sharp corners. I like to look at my grid lines on my ruler, any ruler I'm using to see what it looks like underneath to make sure I'm staying nice and square underneath. And then I'm just going to turn it and cut or slide it over and cut through the other corner. And here I have four perfect half square triangles. So you can see how, whether you had the dark in the middle with the light or the light in the middle with the dark, how you can turn these and make these all come together the way that you want. So here's what you're going to do in one corner. You're going to make the larger size, trim it up the same way, and you'll have a triangle here and here, and that's just how simple and easy the block is. So I always like to um, 
draw it out for you too. So here you're going to have one section of the pattern and you're going to have these half square triangles in it. And then you're going to have the large half square triangle. And let's see which direction the color goes on it. When these are all going right, let me see if I can focus my eye in here on one. Okay, you don't want the you don't want the darks to touch. So I think it's like that. And you can kind of see how that's spinning around um, on the quilt. Double check this when you get ready to sew yours together and look at your pattern that I have this one um, turned correctly. I don't know that it matters, but I don't want it to mess you up here. And then if we have this one going one direction, these go the opposite. Well, I can't tell quickly off of here. I can't get my eye to focus on it. There we go. Okay. Well, I think I've drawn it wrong for you. Let me start over again. I don't want to mess you up. Okay, so if these are going to go this direction, and the dark will go here, so now I know this one is the correct one. And then whatever direction the dark is going here, the one here, the dark is going to go that same direction. Can you see how the dark is going up and to the left, and it's going up and to the left? And then this one down here, is going to go dark the same direction and these will go out and away from that center so that makes a little bit easier for the block to be put together and then when these come together that'll be your block continue to sew those together in rows and you'll have your beautiful quilt just like that and everything starts out with a square in the middle and your strips on the side you can do dark with lights or light with darks, whatever your stash and your scrap pile offer you. And this is how you can take a very complicated block and turn it into the square and a square system. Remember that you can become the piecer that you always wanted to be when you learn the square in a square system. You can find us on YouTube and our website and this Facebook page and stay tuned for more live sessions where we help educate you and motivate you with the square and a square system. See you later.